DA releases arrest affidavit in death of 23 month old girl in Conejos County. Holy shit. Says Courier reporter, Valley Courier, Priscilla Wagoner, Alamosa. Details are emerging in the February 3rd death of a 23 month old girl in Conejos County. Following an investigation conducted by the Conejos County Sheriff's Office. CCSO, with the assistance from the Colorado Bureau of Investigation, CBI, the girl's babysitter, Denise Cordova. De Denise Cordova was taken into custody on Friday, February 24th, by CCSO. Cordova, 47, is facing charges of murder in the first degree and abuse of a child. And abuse of a child. Murder in the first degree and abuse of a child. Why wouldn't she be faced with... Murder of a child. Murder of a child under 12 years old is a class 1 felony. Murder in the first degree and abuse of a child. So if those are the only two charges, murder in the first degree and abuse of a child. So they might say it wasn't intentional, but that still would be negligent. Abuse of a child is that the jury is going to say that no, clearly wasn't first degree and then they're going to land on abuse of a child. As if uh, snuffing out a life is, I mean, abuse is bad enough, right? That means you committed a crime after crime after crime. And then, heck, what if it's not? According to court documents released by the 12th Judicial District Attorney's Office to the Valley Courier at 3.03 p.m. On the afternoon of January 31st, Lieutenant Antonio Galvez with the Conejos County Sheriff's Office responded to 16625 County Road W.5. 16625 County Road W.5. I'm not for sure. In Conejos County where that's at in response to a 911 call from a woman who said her little girl was not breathing. When Galvez, Antonio Galvez, arrived at the house, EMS was already on the scene. The child's mother, whose name is not being released, and Cordova were in the house. Galvez assisted with loading the little girl into the ambulance, noting that he could see swelling and bruises on the child's face. Galvez also noted that Cordova was yelling and trying to explain what happened, stating the toddler had stood up in the, st in the stroller, and fallen face first on the ground. Galvez further reports that while he was in the ambulance, Cordova came to the window and said that the girl kept losing consciousness after the fall, so she kept hitting her on the back. And if there's any marks, that's where they had come from. Galvez and the child's mother went with the girl in the ambulance that transported her to Conejos County Hospital once there, the child's mother told hospital staff she had been at work when she got a call from Cordova that something had happened. When she got to her house, she found her daughter had uh, her daughter being held up by Cordova, who was on the couch. She said her daughter wasn't breathing, and she immediately called 911. Jesus. That call was received at 3.03 p.m. Cordova had told the girl's mother that the incident had happened at 2.53 p.m., so 10 minutes prior Meanwhile, CCSOP Deputy Conejos County Sheriff's Office, CCSOP Patrol Deputy and a sergeant stayed on the scene with Cordova. The sergeant later reported that Cordova smelled of alcohol and had become difficult to speak with. Wow. Cordova smelled of alcohol? Due to the toddler's critical condition, she was then flown to Children's Hospital in Colorado Springs where medical staff told Galvez that the child's injuries were not consistent with the fall from a stroller, an assessment that was supported by one of the surgeons at the hospital. At that point, Sheriff Garth Crowther was contacted and with assistance from CBI, CCSO, launched an investigation into the incident. That investigation, conducted over days, revealed significant contradictions and inconsistencies in Cordova's account of what happened. A deputy reported that Cordova said she had taken the little girl in her stroller for a walk down County Road W.5 toward County Road 16.9 in Conejos County. They were on County Road 16.9 when Cordova said the little girl got excited 
at seeing sheep in a nearby pasture try to stand up on the footrest of the stroller and then fell from the stroller landing face first on the ground. Cordova drew a map for the deputy showing the route she had taken with the child back on the scene several hours later, Lieutenant Galvez drove the route Cordova said she traveled to where he noticed the house located right next to where the incident allegedly occurred. The house had a clear view from its front door of County Road W.5 and windows all around the house. Galvez learned the resident of the house had a motion-activated camera in the window facing County Road W.5 that would catch any traffic on the road. Upon reviewing footage, Captured by the camera from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m., the time frame during which Cordova said the incident took place. Galvez says that there is no footage of Cordova with a little girl in a stroller, stroller on the road. The camera picked up all the traffic that was on the road, Galvez wrote, but no footage of where Cordova claimed she and the little girl in the stroller were walking. There were also other inconsistencies in Cordova's account. <laughs> In text messages retrieved by CCSO on Cordova's phone, she writes that the straps on the stroller broke, which accounted for her falling from the stroller. When it was learned that the stroller was at Cordova's house, a deputy recovered the stroller and brought it to CCSO where it was examined. Galvez writes the straps were not frayed, but seemed to be cut with a sharp object. I was unable to see any other evidence on the stroller consistent with the account. Text messages on Cordova's phone also show inconsistencies in both timing and her talking about the events sometimes in the past tense and other times in the present. On February 2nd, a team comprised of CCSO, DSS, CBI, and the Conejos County Prosecutor for the DA's office had a Zoom call with the Children's Hospital staff. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Just first degree. It should be first degree murder that caused the death of a child under 12 years of age. That should be the charge. Because it's also a first degree, class one felony. If you kill a firefighter, if you kill an ambulance, or if you kill a cop. If you kill a cop, it's automatically class one felony. Same thing if you kill a child under 12. Now, that being said, the, I haven't read the whole account. Let's read the whole account. But it seems to me that there's a possibility, not that she's completely innocent, but... It's possible that a toddler could stand up on a stroller and fall face down. And then, is it on the dirt ground? Because that's what I would look at if it fell on concrete. I mean, your skull and your skin versus concrete or metal, the concrete and the metal is going to win. So, if you're standing up in a stroller and, you know, it's just a two-year-old, right? Less than two years old. So, the, they've just got that big head. They just kind of, you know, wobble up and then... They, they could just fall straight on their face. They could just, the, their head just takes them straight down and they don't even put their hands in front of them to break the fall or anything. If it's on concrete, if it's on like some sort of hard surface, hard concrete surface, maybe a rock, maybe if the child had fell on a rock, that's, you know, you'll need a jury a jury of 12 to take a look at all, you know, all this stuff real closely. And I would, you know, do the charge of the murder in the first degree that caused the death of a child under 12 years of age. Because it seems like there's a little bit of maybe, perhaps, the fact that Cordova is, you know, inconsistent and keeps saying this and that and going all over the place and was drunk. She was drunk. You're the babysitter and you're drinking. Well, that's not very smart. That's not a very good idea. And then afterwards, she says that if there are bruises, which they said that she hit her, hit her on the back. But then the police officer, Lieutenant Antonio Galvez, had said that he saw swelling and bruises on the child's face so if you're hitting them in the back you wouldn't have swelling and bruises on your face though if you fell on your face you could have swelling and bruises you would have you know a bruise right where you fell but not bruises and swelling all over the place so just a thin you know possible maybe there's something to what this denise cordova is saying but ultimately, this is so fucking gross. This is so disgusting. 
It's like, Jesus Christ, don't, don't rape, don't do violence, don't steal, and uh, don't beat up a kid until they die. Don't beat up a two-year-old kid until they die. I mean, that goes against your conscience, right? That should just go against your ethics. But these goddamn fake fucking Christian sons of bitches spare the rod, spoil the child. They don't give a shit. They don't give a shit. What the hell? I want to tie this into natural law, Hobbes' natural law. You have, here's Hobbes' natural law. Hobbes says that you have a right to self-defense. So, of course, that two-year-old had a right to defend themselves. And um, I don't know if they put up much of a fight or what the heck happened. I could see them, you know, I could see that there being a possibility for a defense for Denise Cordova. Because it doesn't look very good for Denise. In fact, it looks very bad. I could see Denise actually maybe even taking, you know, the baby out for a walk or whatever. But if you're drunk and you're moody and you're pushing a stroller on a bunch of gravel... I mean, you're going to get all pissy and shitty, and then if they're crying, she got excited about some sheep and then stood up to go look at the sheep and then fell over. You have a right to defend yourself. You have a right to have a social contract between the people and the government. We have a right to a social contract. We have a right to contracts. We have a right to fair and enforceable contracts. We have a right to be gracious and to accept gratitude. Right to be sociable. We have a right... To forgive and be forgiven, the felicity to pardon. We have a right to look to the future good when it comes to revenges. Don't be cruel. Also, don't be contuming me. Be against contumely. Basically, don't show hatred and contempt. You can show hatred and contempt with your mean mugging and your the tone, the tone of your voice. It's all wrong. Against pride, against arrogance, equity. We have a right to equity. The judge is to treat the two people fairly. All commons for all the people. Of Lot, redrawing of pre, pre, This is Hobbes. Hobbes says that we got at least 19 laws of human nature, plus I found four or five more. So this is the 24 natural laws of Hobbes. And he deduces all this from self-defense. We have a right to self-defense. Ergo, we have a right to traffic and com commerce. We also have a right to judge the necessity of the mean and greatness of the danger. We got a right to get witnesses into the court. If there's a dispute between person A and person B, then person C, D, E, and F will help clarify the issues between person A and person B. Judges cannot be biased cheaters. So it's kind of the same one, right? Make sure you're being fair between two people. You can't be biased. Mediators, peacemakers are granted free passage. You're a peacemaker. You're a mediator. Well, then you're trying to resolve the situation. You're like an Andy Griffith, not like a damn fascist piece of shit. Submission to arbitration. You got to get that arbitration. And actually there should be a option for arbitration. No person is fit to be judging their own controversy. Judges can't be biased cheaters. Witnesses help to clarify the truth. These are all laws of nature. Laws of rational man. Man is animal in nature, but man is also rational in nature. Also, being against incommodity, discomfort, inconvenience, to obey laws. you got to be ready to obey the laws. If you say an oath, if you swear an oath, it must be in the person's own religion. Do you swear to Allah to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you, Allah. So help you, Beelzebub, Yahweh, Yeshua. Men can give up a liberty by consent. Okay, so those are the 24 natural laws of Hobbes. Why do I mention all this? Well, a lot of reasons. There's a lot of reasons. Let's, um, there's three issues. You have Monte Vista man arrested on various charges. 
Terrence Carter, 33, of Monte Vista, was arrested on various charges last week after the Monte Vista Police Department served a search warrant in the 600 block of Jefferson Street looking for stolen property from several thefts. During the search of the residence, officers and agents with CBI located several stolen items. A stolen handgun with the serial number partially ground off in heroin. Wow. So they did get the guy with several stolen items, a stolen handgun, and heroin. Officers also located a marijuana grow within the residence. That's the part that threw me off. Marijuana is legal. So you're allowed to raise like 6 to 12 plants or whatever. The handgun and marijuana were accessible to three young children who reside in the residence. So there's a couple more charges. Carter was arrested and booked into the Rio Grande County Jail on the following charges. Possession of a defaced firearm. Possession of a weapon by a previous offender. Carter is a convicted felon. Secure firearm storage required. Theft unlawful possession of a controlled substance. And child abuse. A news release from... So he's going to get child abuse just because there's marijuana that was a handgun and marijuana that was around. She's going to get charged with child abuse, Denise Cordova, for beating up a child until that child died and is no more, until her life was snuffed out completely. And how many times have we seen this shit? We've seen that uh, Ninamina or whatever, goddamn, in the creek, try to beat up his son in the creek. And then you had motherfucking Chris Watts. Straight up killed his two daughters when he was hitting his wife with a bat. Her last words was, please stop. Please stop. Please don't bash my brains in with a bat. That one with, um, God, what was her name? Some five-year-old girl, the mother took her into the bathroom and said she, she just smacked her five or three times. And that's what killed her. A news release from the MVPD said this is uh, Canales, Emily Canales. A news release from RIP, Emily Canales. RIP, Emily Canales. MVPD said that this is an ongoing investigation. No further information will be released at this time. When I scanned through this paper, I saw that marijuana charge. And it's just kind of like, God damn it. Marijuana is legal here. Why are you still freaking out? But the heroin isn't legal. Fucking stealing people's shit, stealing guns, stolen items. What did he steal? I'd like to know what he stole, too. Because if it's, you know, like big things, small things, it's really the principle of the thing, right? Thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not steal. That's been good law since Moses. What is that, 3,500 3, years? So thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not murder. That's been good law since Moses. Let's see here. Text messages on Cordova's phone inconsistencies about the timing. February 2nd, a team comprised of CCSO, DSS, CBI, and the Conejos County Prosecutor for the DA's office had a Zoom call with Children's Hospital staff. At that time, they were informed that the little girl's condition was extremely critical, and due to the extent of trauma to her head, it was not likely she would survive. That's weird that it's they're even talking about her living because the way that they said that Denise Cordova just held her up just held her up all here. Sorry, your baby was alive. Now, now she's dead, and she's been dead for ten minutes. But somehow they were able to get her to the hospital, get her on a machine, and get her up to Colorado Springs. And we're still talking about the possibility. And then it proved true. Six fifteen a.m. February third, the twenty-three month old girl was pronounced deceased, two years old. Of all the information in the document released by the DA's office, the statements noted by CBI agent. I wish we would say what the girl's name is. She was only on this plan for two years, and, you know, it's it's terrible to kill anybody. It's more particularly terrible to kill a child under two years of age. So, you know, baby Conejos, she's never going to get to grow up. She's never going to find a husband. She's never going to get a career. She's never going to raise a family. She's not going to get a bank account. She's not going to get mailbox. She's not going to run her own house. She's not going to do anything. She's not even going to go to kindergarten. She's not even going to see the big yellow bus come to her house. She's not going to slowly, you know, and awkwardly walk up onto the school bus for the first time. She's not going to go to prom. She's not going to, you know, do any sock hop middle school dances. She's not going to 
No academic team, no basketball, no baseball, no football, no no school, no work, I guess, no oppression. A lot of psychos would be like, oh, she's gone to another place, a place where she could rest forever. No, she's dead, and she's dead forever, and she'd rather have consciousness, and she'd rather be alive. And she's dead, and she's never coming back, and that's fucking bullshit. And it's goddamn bullshit. Of all the information in the document released by the DA's office, the statements noted by CBI agent reviewing the medical chart are the most conclusive. Among those notations in the medical chart are 12 different statements from a total of six doctors involved in the little girl's medical care referencing child abuse or non-accidental trauma. The patient's severity of injury does not match the reported story of the mechanism of injury. Concern for abuse of head trauma, wrote Dr. Maya Cordova is currently being held in the Conejos County Jail with a $1 million bond. You know, that actually... $1 million bond, that's... So she's going to stay in jail, most likely. And if she's able to find $1 million, I mean, that's a hell of a punishment. So laws are don't do this, right? So there's big things. You'd think we could agree on the big things. Now, natural law is talking about what freedoms do we have. So, while it does look that like Denise Cordova did some terrible shit, and Terrence Carter, Terrence, compare and contrast, Terrence Carter, he didn't, he, he stole some things, so he probably hurt some people. There's victims in his case, but nobody died, and a child wasn't murdered, and so... Terrence Carter versus Denise Cordova. Denise Cordova's situation is worse. Now, the reason why I mention both of these is, you know, to talk about how we're supposed to treat one another, right? We're supposed to be like neighbors. We're supposed to, you, you treat others the way you want to be treated. Treat your neighbor like yourself. So, what both of the Terrence Carter and Denise Cordova, what they get is they get a fair trial. They get a fair shake from the system. Now, if they just give up all their rights and throw mercy to the court, well, that's, you know, their own prerogative. But Terrence Carter and Denise Cordova, they get, you know, a lawyer, a decent lawyer, good lawyer, public pretender, whoever, I don't know. I would say get them the best legal representation, get them the disposition, get them the preliminary hearing, get them every single step along the way. Make sure they have instructions for the jury and it goes to a jury trial. Get them all the process, all the steps in the procedure. Make sure that the rules of evidence and the rules of procedure are being applied to them. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. So if anybody out here is being accused of killing a child under two, you'll be thankful that there's procedure. Preliminary hearing, dispositional hearing, pre-trial readiness conference, then a jury trial. Then sentencing, there's also advisement of charges and bail bond hearing and the arrest in the beginning. They've already done the arrest, and I guess they've done a bail bond hearing. Advisement of charges, they've already done those. So now it would be a preliminary hearing, dispositional hearing, pre-trial readiness conference, and then the jury trial. And the reason why you'd want to do that, if you're the police officer, the, you know, the judges or the clerk or the magistrate, whoever's trying the case... You want them to have a fair process. You want the rules of evidence to be fair. They could turn in whatever pieces of evidence that they think that they could, you know, think up. The rules of procedure, fair evidence, and then, you know, the trial. is uh, She's either guilty or not guilty, right? Either this Terrence Carter is guilty or not guilty. Either Denise Cordova is guilty or not guilty. And, um... And that's why you would make sure that they have the best legal representation, make sure they have the same rules of evidence, same rules of criminal procedure as everybody else. So when you get a conviction, you know it's a good conviction. And it's, you got a dead body. You have to take it to a jury trial. You have to take it to a jury trial. Well, we just couldn't convince them of jury beyond a reasonable doubt unanimously. We couldn't convince, so we decided to drop the charges. Give it the old college try, goddammit. We don't want people going around killing other people's kids around here. That is no. No. Don't fucking do that. No. 
No, that's bad. That's wrong. Don't do that. So, laws are don't do that. Freedoms, when you have people that read their freedoms, you want them to peacefully assemble. I saw a cop, and it looked like he arrested the guy for just holding a sign, but it turned out he had like a little replica gun. But, had that cop arrested somebody for just holding a sign, even if it said, cops are pigs, I'm allowed to stand on a sidewalk with a sign that says, cops are pigs. That's clearly defended by free speech. Just sitting there holding a sign. He had a replica gun. So, you know, they're like, what are you doing out here? So it pissed me off at first because it's clearly protected. What I want is not a cop who's going to arrest somebody for holding a sign. What I want is a cop who's going to arrest that cop. Who's going to arrest somebody for holding a sign? No, he's got a right to speak. He's got a right to peacefully assemble. He's got a right to religion. What the fuck are you doing? The whole point of the preamble to the U.S. Constitution, the whole point of the preamble to Colorado's Constitution is to establish justice, to perfect government, to have an independent government, also to perfect the union. America wants to perfect the union. Colorado wants to have an independent and perfect government. So we're tending towards a perfect government. We're tending towards a perfect union. But both Colorado and America, they are in agreement that we should establish justice and establish justice and provide for the let's see, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and to protect our individual civil liberties. And I think we should actually, once you learn that the U.S. Constitution, so if you're part of the government, Colorado government or America government, the America government, and you walk outside and you're not establishing justice, you're not establishing domestic tranquility, and you're not providing for the common defense or the promoting the general welfare, pr protecting individual freedoms, both Colorado's government and America's government is instituted to protect our individual freedoms. And I'm such a big freedom guy. That I'll listen to law and order. I'll listen to the procedure and the rules of evidence. But I have, as a Colorado American, I have over 100 freedoms. 100 civil liberties. So if you're a police officer in Colorado and you walk outside and you're not instituting domestic tranquility or providing for the common defense or promoting the general welfare, protecting individual freedoms, I think it's to secure the blessings of liberty. You arrested a guy for holding a sign. You're not securing the blessings of liberty if you're going around arresting a guy with a fucking sign. You piece of shit. Those are the point. That's the point of America. That's the point for Colorado. If you're a cop, a federal cop or a state cop or a county cop, you walk outside to establish justice or you don't walk out. You walk outside to establish justice, domestic tranquility, common defense, general welfare, you promote the general welfare, you protect our individual freedoms, or you don't walk outside at all. You're here to form a more perfect union, to form a more independent, perfect government, to establish justice, domestic tranquility, common defense, general welfare, and to protect our civil liberties. That's the fucking point. And I always thought that the U.S. government was a limiting government, but it actually seems here by the preamble, they both have the same powers. So both Colorado and America is limited to just those things. If a cop goes outside and they, uh, let's say they break justice, let's say they are not establishing domestic tranquility, and let's say instead of protecting individual freedoms, they arrested a person for holding a sign that says cops are pigs. Well, then that means that cop needs to go to jail. That cop is against America. That cop is against Colorado. That cop is just the fastest piece of shit just hurting people for the fuck of it. You can't break American Constitution or the Colorado Constitution. If you can't couch your behavior in promoting the general welfare, protecting individual freedoms, providing for the common defense, protecting, establishing justice and domestic tranquility, then uh, you don't know what the hell you're doing. You don't know what the hell you're doing. So I'll get more into human nature, but there's several things. You can't establish... Somebody else's rights, you can't say you got a freedom that other people don't have a freedom. So both Terrence, you know, Carter has a right to a trial by jury. 
And a speedy trial at that. So hurry up. Get the witnesses. Get the jurors in there and panel 12 people. And get a decision. Get the truth so you can get some justice. And get a judgment.